On the last episode of Traveling Through Iceland, I traveled inland to experience the F-roads and find the wonders among them. Experiencing Iceland's volcanic terrain and traversing more water crossings than I can count turned into checking off bucket list destinations and challenges that would leave us turning around, following Iceland's mighty glaciers to see where they take us next. Scientists have said that these glaciers are melting at a rate of 40 meters per year, and all that water has to go somewhere creating thousands of rivers that will mostly all end up in the ocean, we are headed to a place where you can see it all happen right in front of your eyes. The Vatnuk Glacier covers 14% of Iceland. Out of its many locations, Jokosalang is its number one most visited spot. Acting like a natural harbor, where the wildlife can come and take a break from the ocean's strong currents. This glacier lagoon is Iceland's largest and deepest glacial lake. The icebergs broken off from the glacier could range between a few thousand years old each. This popular Iceland destination has even been the spot of two James Bond films, one Tomb Raider film, and of course Game of Thrones. As the salt and fresh water meet, the ice begins to break apart, which is then brought with the current out into the Atlantic Ocean. As some of the icebergs get pulled out into the ocean, other pieces get pushed back inland onto the black beach. Creating what everyone now calls Diamond Beach. After enjoying the scenery, it was time to get a move on once again. Putting in some serious kilometers on this trip means it's nice to take a break and get some local food once in a while, and nothing beats a reindeer burger. With a full stomach and a full gas tank, it was time to continue. Vestahorn holds some magnificent mountain views. I would consider this the transition spot between southern Iceland and moving into the eastern part of the island. It's also home to a recreation of a time lost in history. The famous Viking village in Vestahorn was built by Universal Studios as a filming location. Written sources consider the age of settlement in Iceland around the year 874 by a man named Igerfer Arneson, who was the first to sail to Iceland with the purpose of settling on the land. This village would be a good example of what it must have been like for the Vikings in the early Iceland times.
There is also a campsite here, and I had full intention on staying here in my plan until I got turned around on the F-roads. Now, with the extra time I have, I'll be carrying on along the east coast today, but not before taking in some great views. The Eastern Fjords are a collection of mountains that face out onto the Norwegian Sea. Open to the ocean winds along the seacoast, with its long and fertile green fields and surrounding mountains, this drive is known as one of the most beautiful you can do in Iceland. After a scenic drive along the coast, our next destination would take us northeast, so we would begin to climb back up into the mountains. This F-road would act as a shortcut, though with much steeper climbs up through the mountains. A little rain can't stop me from enjoying a waterfall, though this seems like the hundredth one I've seen on this trip so far, and being from Niagara Falls myself, I can't stop but somehow be amazed by Iceland's unique land features. High up in the mountains now, with spots of snow back in view. I couldn't help but notice how green the east side of Iceland is compared to the south. There's even trees growing wildly up here, which I don't believe I've actually seen in Iceland yet. After checking out many destinations and traveling over 300 kilometers today, this little campsite along the lake would be a great spot to rest for the night. This little homestead slash campsite was owned by a nice couple that just likes to help strangers as they're moving along. 
You even get full access into a small kitchen, and let me tell you, it was great to cook on a stove instead of using a jet boil for once. This morning would kick off with a five kilometer hike to another destination I've been dying to see since landing in Iceland. Standing around 128 meters tall, making it one of the top five highest waterfalls in Iceland, Hennifoss is famous for its beautiful red coloration. Each layer of red rock is actually a remnant of an ancient volcanic eruption giving a visual representation of how Iceland was formed. In the last 24 hours alone, I've got to see with my own eyes why everybody calls Iceland the land of fire and ice. With another amazing experience, on the morning of day four, it was time to get back on the road with only two days left in this adventure. Now traveling in northern Iceland, we have to be cautious of our time. Although there is still so much to see, the vehicle is due back in two days and three nights. My flight is scheduled back to Alberta. And I am currently on the complete opposite side of the country which is famously known for its geothermal activity. Okay, try it. I think it fogs up the lens too. There are many high temperature geothermal areas in Northern Iceland with fumaroles and mud pots found in multiple locations. In this area, at a depth of 1,000 meters, the temperature is above 200 degrees Celsius with a large concentration of sulfur which used to be used to make gunpowder this area smells quite a bit like a rotten egg smell though it's still beautiful to see being located between two tectonic plates with so much volcanic activity iceland has used all these resources of geothermal energy for things like space heating and electricity. Besides all the scientific facts, right now, it kind of feels like I'm on a different planet.
with a strong smell in our noses, it's time to go see what else Northern Iceland has in store for us. On the final episode of this Iceland adventure, we take on Iceland's highest F road. The weather turns for the worst, and we still need to travel 200 kilometers on our last day. <laughs>